Hello! Today I'm going to be showing you all of my philodendrons in my plant collection. First things first, I'm going to apologize for the lighting because it's going to be changing and the camera like adjusts to it. It's what causes it is it this light behind me and it's very gloomy today. So I have every light facing me that I have available. So it's just going to change a little bit. So it might be a little distracting, but you should still be able to see the philodendrons. Um, and that's probably why you're here. So I will go ahead and get started. Another thing I'm going to mention is that I've been collecting plants for several years. This did not happen overnight. In addition to I have a plant shop, so I sell plants. So these aren't really just my collection. It's a combination of my personal collection in addition to the plants that I use for my business. So yeah, just if you get the notion to start comparing yourself or your journey or thinking you need to have this many philodendrons, you don't. Um, this is just specific to me and my life. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin to show you these philodendrons. And this video might be in two parts or more than two parts because I have a shit ton of philodendrons. I have more philodendrons than anything else. And not, that's not just anything like plants, any other kind of plants. I do mean anything else. I have more philodendrons than anything else. Okay, so we're gonna just start by what is the most in my way? And that is this philodendron jungle boogie. And I'm hoping you're gonna be able to see this through all the dang philodendrons. So yeah, this is kind of an easy one. I just kind of use it as decor. I set it and forget it. And then you can kind of see there's some extra floral nectary damage, which is pretty common for philodendrons and usually is nothing to worry about. I noticed that on a lot of them and it's never really become harmful. It is something that philodendrons secrete to attract ants to protect them from aphids. So, and in my experience anyway, it doesn't necessarily mean that the plant has aphids or some kind of pest. It just is something that philodendrons do, some more than others, but I don't think I have hardly any that I've never found extra floral nectaries on. Um, also, I have seen people consume the extra floral nectaries, but I personally have not, nor would I recommend anyone do that, but it's your life and you do what you see fit. Okay, the next one is a philodendron bipinifolium. So yeah, this one is a really fun, like lobed shape. So it's kind of a good dupe if you're looking for like a what's it called? UPI or 69686. It's a little bit easier to find and more affordable, but kind of still has that vibe and it's very easy going, uh, pretty easy to take care of like a lot of philodendrons are. Okay, this is a philodendron red emerald. And I did recently take a top cutting so you can see uh, the top here and then it's getting some new growth, which is exciting. But yeah, this is just like, what, am, what is the word? Like a classy, classic kind of philodendron. It's like, it just, I don't know. It's just a cool one. I really like this one. It has like kind of reddish petioles and it's, also a really easy one in my opinion. So this is a philodendron El Chaco Red. And you can kind of probably see the back of it. It's like a reddish brown 
type of color and I previously thought that it was called that because of the color but I guess it like originated from a region called El Chaco maybe I don't know wherever it came from it's very pretty and it has like these velvety leaves and yeah I've heard that they they can be finicky but that's not really been my experience I did recently take a top cutting of this one and hasn't started getting any new growth yet but and then the roots are kind of reddish tone too so that's fun yeah this and just a heads up, I'm going to say probably at least 30 to 40 of these are like my favorite, but I don't know if I have a favorite or not, but it's just something I do. I say that every plant is my favorite and I guess that means none of them are my favorite. I don't know. They're all my favorite, including this one. And... Um, I'm showing you the ones that I keep in my house first and then after I get them all put away I'm gonna go out and get the ones in my greenhouse um, like they shouldn't have any pests or anything but I do try to keep those two things separate and I, um, yeah they're all kind of like touching here also they wouldn't all fit I don't think so yeah just uh, trying to prevent potential cross-contamination. Okay, this is a philodendron fibrosum and this is a really underrated philodendron. It has like those velvety heart-shaped leaves and fuzzy petioles. I'm really into the fuzzy petioles. I think they're so cool. I know they freak a lot of people out but I think they're fun. Note on this one, they ship terribly. I've lost several of these trying to ship them. And yeah, just something to note if you're looking for one, try to find it locally so you won't have to ship it because they may not make it. Okay, this is one of my newer philodendrons. It is a philodendron majestic and I have to admit, this was one I wanted for a long time and I was a little disappointed when I saw it in person. And that may just be this specific one and I, I imported it so it kind of needs a little bit of work usually after it's uh, gone through that. So that may be why, but it is really pretty. It's got like the velvety leaves and a little bit of silvery variegation. So I'm hoping maybe this next leaf that we're getting will be a little bit more like what I was expecting when I got this one. This is one of my favorite philodendrons again, but really this one is one of my favorites. It is a philodendron splendid, which is a cross between a melanochrysum and varicosum. Uh, both are really nifty philodendrons if you ask me so I mean you can't go wrong and this one's been just really chill and not fussy and it's got those velvety leaves that I'm a big fan of and like the back is kind of varicosum -y. the only thing that would make this plant better was if it had fuzzy petioles that would be that would probably be a little much for me, to be honest. Like, too many of my favorite things in a plant. Like, I would just become overstimulated more than likely. Which is not hard to do. So, this is one of my newer ones. It is a variegated heteraceum. And this is the newest leaf. This came out in my care. And it is a half moon. And I got this one for like a cheaper price because it had lower variegation. So don't be afraid of low variegation plants. Also, this is one that like I didn't get the hype for a long time. Uh, definitely not until I saw it in person. But once I saw it, it is really pretty. This is one I've wanted for a long time. And I know this is not necessarily 
the most impressive specimen of this plant, but this is a little baby philodendron strawberry shake. And I bought such a tiny one because these do go for a pretty penny. So yeah, I did not want to pay the price for like a sizable one. So yeah, it does have some really cute little variegation and pink stems. Okay, here is my lemon lime heart leaf philodendron. You can't go wrong with a heart leaf philodendron or any philodendron, I guess. Uh, yeah, I've had this for a few years. It is definitely slower growing than like just the regular green one, but it is really pretty and fun and yeah, I definitely am guilty of neglecting this sometimes. This is kind of one of those that I classify more as decor and I don't really give those plants the same type of care, which sounds kind of bad, but like I don't think less of them. Like I just, I, I almost like them better because you don't have to fuss over them, give them like greenhouse conditions. You can just set them somewhere in your house where they look pretty and get enough light and just leave them. So that is one of those kind of plants. Okay, here is my green heartleaf philodendron. And yeah, once again, easy going, not fussy and is excellent decor. My husband just sent me some goofy, um, what are those called? Um, those little moving picture things. GIF? GIF? I don't know. Well, because it's my birthday, he sent them to me and I sound ancient when I just, when I just described that. But I definitely feel like I'm older than the hills today because I started craving lunch at like 10 15. like i came in here and i was like oh i'm gonna have lunch and then i'm gonna film my video but no it's fucking 10 15 and i'm ready for lunch so i am ancient <laughs> okay here is another philodendron hybrid hybrid or cross i don't know what sometimes i forget the word i'm looking for when i'm filming and I'm not an idiot, but like when I'm talking to myself in a camera, my brain functions much differently. So this is a Philodendron Glorious, which is a cross between a Gloriosum and Melanochrysum. Uh, also on their own, two excellent Philodendrons. And this one is no different. Okay, here is a philodendron pastazana. And this one is a crawling philodendron, but I am growing it upright. Um, I should get it on a moss pole or something, but I just want to show you that I'm growing it upright. It can be done. And yeah, it just has like nice little pillowy leaves. And it's also pretty chill. It doesn't really, doesn't really ask a lot of me which I appreciate. This truly is one of my all time favorite philodendrons. This is a philodendron gloriosum. You cannot go wrong with philodendron gloriosum. Is this the newest leaf? Yeah, this is the newest leaf. And when they're newer, they have like more pronounced white veins. I do think there's a variety that has uh, white veins all the time, but that is not what I have here. Um, but yeah, if you're looking to get like some of the more uncommon philodendrons, I would recommend the Gloriosum because it just looks, I don't know, it looks like it should be expensive if that makes sense, but it's just uh, not a difficult plant. It doesn't require crazy conditions. It's just uh, an ideal philodendron. Okay, this is a philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy. 
and I know the camera is not going to do this one justice. It has like uh, kind of like subtly metallic leaves and this is definitely one where like if you're in the market I would just spend the money to get one with the more mature leaves like this because I mean I don't I mean it could just be personal preference but I see a lot of them with like little teeny tiny leaves and they're just so much cooler with the big leaves so I think it's worth it to end up with one more like this and they're they're definitely going down in price too so they should be a little easier to find okay this is my philodendron brazil this was one of my very first plants that i ever had in like 2018 um yeah and she's still going strong and was with me through my journey of learning how to not kill plants and she survived it so yeah another really good philodendron okay so this is just a cutting uh, this is a philodendron gigas and it's another i i definitely have a philodendron type i like the velvety leaves um yeah this one was a cutting it does have a little tiny new growth going on in there but it took a really long time to root like three months and then out of nowhere it just kind of rooted seemingly overnight and it has like a red a red back okay so this is a philodendron varicosum and if you watch my videos you may have seen me take a number of cuttings from this plant um, yeah, it is starting to grow back. And I've also heard a lot of people say that they struggle with spider mites on their varicosums. I have not had that experience, but I know there are several different types. I mean, well, well, when I bought it, it had spider mites. I treated it and it never had them again for some reason. So... I don't know what type this is. I know there are different types. It is finally starting to get the fuzzy petioles. Yeah, I really like this one. One of my favorites. Okay, now we're getting into the really big ones. This is a philodendron plowmanii. I love this one. It is like it's massive. You can tell like this leaf is definitely bigger than my head. So that's, uh, it's just fun to have a plant with just massive leaves like this. I got it over the summer and it had like, it did have pretty big leaves, but like once it got established, it's grown really quickly. And look at the petioles. They look like lasagna, which I love. I love I love pasta or food in general, I guess. Any plant that reminds me of food is a good one. It's really heavy though, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take a minute. I think it's probably mostly the pot that's heavy and I just watered it. Okay. Okay, this one, get ready because this is a really big one. How am I gonna show this? This is my philodendron Jose Buono. And yeah, some of the variegation has started to like melt or burn off. But even with that, very cool plant, am I right? It's kind of, it's kind of an awkward one actually. This is the newest leaf, it's pretty small, but um, I know this plant needs to be repotted and I will do that when it comes springtime. But as you can see, this is a giant plant and it's gonna be interesting to repot it. Yeah. <laughs> this is a philodendron tenu. There's really not a good angle. I just treated this one for spider mites, so it's a little bit wet. But yeah, it has like those nice 
textured leaves. Um, I do find that this one is very prone to spider mites though, more so than a lot of philodendrons. So something to keep in mind if you're in the market for a philodendron tenue. Bernadette is barking because she can now see out a window that was previously blocked by philodendrons. Here's my favorite philodendron. It's a philodendron St. Bernard. Welcome back to a shit ton of philodendrons, a memoir. That's what I'm gonna call my memoir if I write a memoir. <laughs> anyway. So these are all the philodendrons that are in my greenhouse. Uh, so that's why like they're not in cute pots. The pots are kind of dirty. The plants may even be kind of dirty. Um, yeah, cause they're outside. So there's also a lot of them and I didn't count these. If somebody wants to count them up and let me know in the comments how many philodendrons I have, feel free, but I'm not counting. So anyway, the first one, because it's closest to me, is a philodendron Paraiso Verde. And yeah, it's definitely getting leaves with lower variegation, but it is my understanding that that is what they do during the winter. And then when springtime conditions approach and warm weather, a lot of light, starts happening again, they will get more variegation like this. So if you know about that, let me know. But I'm not that worried about it necessarily. Okay, so the next one, if you've been watching my videos, you may have seen me uh, talk about this one in my importing plants video and then the update on those. This is my philodendron ring of fire. And yeah, this growth point, it didn't look like it died or anything, but it has produced two new ones. And it looks like this one probably isn't going to produce a leaf. So that's interesting. But other than that, it's still doing really well and seems to be enjoying the greenhouse. Okay, this is a philodendron fuzzy petiole. This is a really cool one. It's like kind of velvety, kind of like gloriosum vibes and the petioles aren't terribly fuzzy I wouldn't say but they are slightly so I would assume that they become increasingly fuzzy as they mature but yeah this was kind of an impulse buy type of plant so I didn't really research it or anything I just thought it was cool and I saw it at a nursery and therefore I purchased it. If this is my philodendron painted lady. You've probably seen this one before in a video if you watch my videos. Um, I cut this one up for a propagation video recently. And yeah, you can see how aggressively this thing grows. It's kind of scary actually if you think about it too much. Yeah, you can tell. I've taken tons of cuttings of this plant and it just keeps growing. So this is, this is another one that I feel like is really underrated. Like it looks really fancy, but it's really easy. It doesn't give you a lot of trouble. And this is my Philodendron Billetier. I love this leaf shape. This is so pretty and the orange Petioles are so fun. I love a bright colored, fun colored petiole or plant. Like I'm a foliage person, I'm not a flower person. And I also don't really go for like plants like crotons and stuff, which who does? <laughs> but anyway, I really like green with like a subtle something, you know? Oh, boy, the fucking door open? 
It is incredibly windy today and it just blew the back door open, which was somewhat alarming. I may not have shut it though. So, Okay, so this is a philodendron roseocatophyllum. Um, yeah, this one got thrips back in the day and I had to cut it down to nothing and it's growing back and I believe that is what it is. So yeah, when I get pests on a plant, I cut off any really damaged leaves. I know a lot of people kind of disapprove of that. Um, I do it so I can monitor the progression of the pest infestation because like I never remember like which leaves are damaged and which ones aren't. So that's why I do that. And that's why you may see an occasional stump in my collection. Which I've never, not ever, cut off all of the leaves on a plant and not had it come back. I know people like speak of plants going into shock when you do that, but I've never had that happen. So don't be scared to just saw off all the leaves if you've got pests. Okay, this is a philodendron Adaba poensi. And this one has actually matured really quickly when I put it into the greenhouse. It wasn't growing that fast. I got it about a year ago and the leaves were just these little tiny guys. And this is the most recent leaf that it put out. And I'm a big fan of these like lobed philodendrons. I think they're just fun. And this one has kind of a different leaf color. It's just like a little bit sage green and the back of the leaves are purple. And I'm starting to get excited about some of these philodendrons and just like kind of acting goofy. Just know that that is normal when it comes to me talking about philodendrons. Okay, this is a philodendron dark lord. This one is so cool. It's really underrated. Like, I don't know why this isn't more sought after. Also, something very nifty about this plant is like when you cut it, it like bleeds. Like there's like blood that comes out of it, but it's not blood, it's just philodendron juice. But it's very interesting. And it's like kind of purpley maroon. It's just a little bit different and also really easy going. Like you don't have to keep it in a greenhouse for it to do well. I do, but you don't have to. It's a really good one. Uh, this is a philodendron cream splash. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was gonna like fall out, but it's just coming out of one stem here. I've taken so many cuttings of this that have just like uh, sprouted out down at the bottom, but this is really just one sprig. Yeah, it's another interesting Hartley philodendron variety and the leaves are a different kind of shape. Um, it is different from the Brazil. I'm gonna go get the Brazil to show you I've definitely had people tell me, I have, I have one listed on my Etsy shop and I've had people like send me a message and tell me this is a Brazil, this is way overpriced, but it's not. Um, side note, I've thought it's very interesting how many people are willing to message me on Etsy and tell me that a plant is misidentified when it actually isn't. If you've, if you've got the balls to do something like that, just make sure you're correct in your identification. It's all I'm saying. Okay, so here's the Brazil and then here is the cream splash. Very different, obviously this is not Brazil. Also, like if I actually do have a plant misidentified, like every time someone messages me that, I'm like, oh, do I have this wrong? And like go and research it. And usually I don't, like I'm an overthinker, I have anxiety. So I like, I put a lot of work into my actual listings. Like I research the price, the name, I make sure that's correct. 
and just because I I worry about things like that like I don't want to be accidentally deceiving people anyway I've just thought it's interesting the number of times people have done that and not one of them <laughs> has even been correct anyway tangent this is a philodendron mame silver um, I have a mame with less uh, just the regular mame I did not bring it in here um, I figured this will this will cover it but this one has more silver variegation than just the regular mame also side note that's why I did not bring the other one in here uh, philodendron mame is incredibly incredibly prone to spider mites same with the plowmanii just you kind of have to keep on top of that um, treat it before it has pests and just clean it off every opportunity you get because it it will get spider mites it's just a matter of when or that's my experience anyway fortunately like i don't think spider mites are the worst pest at all like they're just they're kind of a nuisance but definitely not as bad as like thrips also mealybugs i guess they aren't that bad to get rid of but they just are kind of they're kind of scary okay this is a philodendron 69686 once again, a fun little lobed philodendron. I know a lot of people like this one as like a replacement for the uh, UPI, but I don't really, I don't, I like this one more than that one. And this one is definitely more affordable, but I think it's a cool one. Also, look at this root. <laughs> Stuff grows so much differently out in the greenhouse than it does in indoor conditions it's very interesting so I've had a lot of roots like this like grab onto the table or my little trays or other plants like I've had these roots like just crawl out of their pots and then get into somebody else's pot and it's just a little bit scary but also fascinating <laughs> okay this is a philodendron Thai sunrise and I traded for this one and it was just like a one leaf mid cutting and it's actually once it took off it took off and I took a cutting recently which activated four four different growth points so that's really cool I'm excited to see how this one grows out this is a philodendron brantiana this is definitely the most difficult philodendron that I have ever owned which is funny because it's like more of a common one but it just does not do well for me unless it is out in the greenhouse and my propagations don't do well of it so it's just gonna live out in the greenhouse but in my experience anyway it's been a very difficult philodendron and I don't say that about a lot of philodendrons probably this and the mame but I mean the answer seems to be like heat and humidity so but in the house it was not a fan even in my greenhouse cabinets okay this is my variegated philodendron burl marks and I have another burl marks just a green one but I did not bring it in here because it is enormous and I couldn't get it in here. Also, it's very windy and I don't want to injure it. Yeah, this, uh, if you watched my propagation video that I did recently, I cut this up and I think it has come back and is just as big now and maybe even better variegated. Like this leaf, that is so pretty. So if you're looking for like a variegated plant that's more on the affordable side this is a good one because it's not difficult I mean it it can revert but I feel like it's a good one because it will definitely stay alive okay this is a 
Philodendron Mayoi, I believe. Yeah, this was a mystery node that I bought, was it one year ago? Yeah, I think I bought it like a year ago and I'm just now finding out what it is because it was giving like little leaves like this. But now it looks like this. It has like kind of pinkish petioles. So this is a Philodendron Florida Ghost. And you can see that the new growth is very lightly colored. So yeah, they what they usually do, I wish I had my, I took a lot of cuttings of one a few months ago and it had like the really pretty white leaves, but they fade to green over time for staying alive purposes. This is a philodendron deflexum. Um, this was a cutting I took pretty recently, but look at how big the newest leaf is. The leaves on these can get really big and yeah, you know how I feel about my lobed philodendrons. This is a philodendron squamiferum. And I used to have, if I have a picture of it, I'll put it on the screen. I used to have a really big, pretty mother plant, but I took a lot of cuttings of it and it's in the process of growing back right now. So it didn't look as good as this one. This one will go onto my shop, but it has like the fuzzy petioles and a really unique leaf shape. This one's pretty wild looking, but that's okay. It's a philodendron mexicana. And this one I imported when it was very, very hot outside, so it did not fare well, but it's starting to bounce back. And yeah, philodendron mexicanum, not the prettiest specimen. Okay, here is my philodendron melanochrysum. Uh, this one is one that I was propagating for my shop and I kept it because of this ugly leaf and I'm glad I did because it looks like the leaf shape is looking more mature more quickly than my original mother plant. So I'm just going to keep this one and see how big I can get the leaves. This is a Philodendron bipinifolium aurea. Uh, this is gonna be for my shop, but my I didn't feel like dragging another plant in like an eight inch pot in here. So I just grabbed this one and it's a really pretty one. So yeah. In the last philodendron is a uh, philodendron giganteum variegated. And it has pretty mild variegation right now, but the new leaf is looking like it's gonna be a lot more variegated. Uh, this was another one that I imported over the summer. So it's still kind of, it's just now starting to bounce back and grow like really consistently. But yeah, I'm excited to have this one. I think it's really pretty. Okay, so that's gonna be um, all of my philodendrons, I'm sure. Oh, dang it. I know there's some I forgot now that I am standing here. So that's all the philodendrons that I remembered that I have. There's probably more. Yep, I'm, I th I'm thinking of another one. I'll see if I can like insert something at the end of this with the ones I forgot. Anyway, so thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I don't know what to do with my hands. I feel like, I really feel like a farmer in these overalls. And I like to make jokes about being a farmer uh, because I have a plant shop and a greenhouse, but I'm not really like a, like a farmer farmer, but that's why it's funny when I call myself a farmer to anyone who will listen. So thank you. But yeah, anyway, about the farmer thing, my dad texted me this morning to tell me happy birthday and he said what are you doing today tending your crops <laughs> so i said no i'm making a video about my crops so thanks for watching this video about my crops anyway uh thank you for watching please like and subscribe 
and let me know what your favorite philodendron was and or if you know of any cool philodendrons that I don't have. Always looking for more. You can't have too many. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Queen City Tropicals and I will see you again soon.